homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today it's a rainy Tuesday. Uh, it may get so loud. Uh, we were supposed to have thunderstorms today, but right now it's not even raining. It's uh, just overcast. Uh, it may get so loud that I'll have to stop the video because this is just a tin roof. So when the rain starts pouring, it you can't hear a thing in here. But we're back at our 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 Harbor Freight drill press, getting ready to make it a mill now. First off, I apologize if this video comes comes out looking choppy. Uh, what I am going to try and do is I'm going to try and show you everything that I'm doing on this uh, drill press to mill conversion, warts and all. Uh, I'm going to screw stuff up. I'm going to uh, do very intuitive things every now and then, probably very seldom, but every now and then, very intuitive things. Uh, and I'm going to do things that... Uh, make absolutely no sense. So, yeah, it's it's one of those videos where I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm bringing you along for the ride, and hopefully you'll figure out what it is we're doing. Uh, I appreciate all your comments. If you like this stuff, subscribe. This is, I don't know how many episodes this is going to take, but it's going to take a few episodes. Uh, I would like to say that you can take a drill press right out of the box, buy a couple things, and start milling. Uh, but that's not the way it works. A drill press is not made to be a mill. And the number one thing is right here. And this is what I'm worried about. Well, get you in the right direction. Is this. This is attached to a spindle. This is called the quill. Okay? This is what holds the this part. Up in here is a spindle. It's tapered. We call it a Morris taper. Now, inside this spindle, there's a inside this quill it goes all the way up to the top of the to the top of the drill press and it has a bolt and bearings and things up there that make this hold in but now this chuck is just held in by pressure by pressing it in okay this is tapered in such a way that it's pressed in and the way you remove it is right here there are these grooves and there's a tool that goes in there that I didn't get with the drill press okay so I'll probably have to make me one which is not a big deal it's just a, a triangle piece of metal that you drive in there and it pushes it pushes the Morse taper out so right here I don't have that but what I'm mainly concerned about, about converting this to a mill, my number one concern is, <clears throat> will this, when I'm cutting sideways, cause the taper to come loose and this fall out? Because that happens. Uh, my drill press, my little Craftsman drill press, over here uh, that I use for my woodworking, that comes out uh, regular and I have to press it back up in there depending on what I'm doing with it. Very seldom do I do things that it's rubbing on the sides. But when you're milling, you're going to have a piece of metal in here and you're going to have a bit and it's going to come right here to the side of it. It's going to come right there to the side of it and then you're going to have to mill across it. Well, what happens there is that it causes chatter and that rubs back and forth until this gets loose and it just pops out. So that's one of the number one concerns. Uh, today I would like to figure out if uh, that would be a, a major concern. But one of the first things I need to know 
is how do I make this drill press stop where I want it to. Of course, I have a stop up here that will only allow it to go down a certain distance. It's right here, this little screw thing. That If I put it at a certain distance, there's a scale over here that lets it go down only a certain distance. Like if I wanted to go down a quarter of an inch or half an inch or whatever. But it has this magnetic thing, or this, uh, this right here, which when this goes down, this is spring loaded and it lets it come right back up. Now I think, I think this set screw would lock it in. Like if I pulled it down where I wanted it, I could set this set screw and it would lock it in. But I'm not certain because I'll put up a picture. I've got the I've got the plans, and I put up a picture of the. Uh, I love Harbor Freight because they give you these uh, exploded diagrams of all their equipment, and they keep them online, and you can load them anytime you want to. So I was able to go online and get the manual for this eight or ten year old drill press. It was still online. So does setting this make it uh, keep the head from going up and down. Setting that, well let's find out. Uh, I think it's a 14 millimeter for the nut. Yep, the nut's easy enough to take loose. Now I'm going to pull this down here just a little bit and take a screwdriver Look at there. That locks that right in place. So that is a lockdown. Well, in my opinion, instead of this set screw, which I can lock back down, instead of this set screw, maybe I need to put in a, a, a handled thing. So that's one of the things we'll, we'll look at doing. Now, now that I know that this set screw locks the head up and down, take it back out, put that back down there, now that I know that that locks that head up and down, now I know I can set my depth from here and work on it. Now, how many thousandths off will it be? I don't know. But most of the time, all I need to do is cut a quarter inch groove or a, a five inch slot. I don't need to go to the hundred thousandths or the, or the ten thousandths. I don't need that. So that could be uh, something that's going to be really, really good and keep me from having to crank this table up and down all the time. All right, so now that I know this locks this head in, it was not clear in the exploded diagram what this set screw actually did. But what it does is it catches on the quill right here in this groove. See, there's a groove right here. It catches on that quill and locks it in. So that works really good. So that part, now I can set my depth without having to move my table all the time. Let's look at some of the other things that I bought here to go along with this. Okay, I bought this set on eBay for uh, $49.95, and that included shipping. Okay, it's uh, I'm sure it's uh, not American made. Uh, I'm not too worried about that right this second. But what it does is these should go down into these slots and allow me, these are, allow me to put bolts on let's show you, let me move this back this will allow me to put bolts in here like this Now, one of my problems is, one of my problems is, is I screwed up. Okay? 
I screwed up. <clears throat> this right here, while it's not big enough to come out, it is not the right size for the T-slots down here. This is a three-quarter inch groove right here. This groove, that's three-quarter inches. And I bought half inch, half inch of this because I didn't find a, uh, a full three-quarter inch one. I bought half inch one and figured I'd make it work. Okay, that's the way it goes when you're doing crap on a shoestring. All right, figure I'll make it work. And it locks in there pretty well, right, like that. Okay, I just have to twist it a little bit to make it fit. And that's locked in. Now, what this is for, let's say I've got an irregular shaped part. Okay, here we go. Here's an irregular shaped part. This is a water pump off of a... I don't know what it's off of. It's either it's either off of a of, off of a Dodge, or it's off of a Chevy Cruze. I'm not sure which one it is. I think this one is off of a Chevy Cruze. It's all aluminum. And let's say we wanted to mill a spot on it. Let's say we wanted to mill, say this part. All right. But I need it to be level. Well, this is all wonky setting up here. So what you can do. is you can use these and get that set up there in such a way that it's going to hold still. Then you can take these and clamp down the different parts. Okay? You can take this and clamp it right there. And then you can have another one right here and clamp it down so that you could adjust this and get it clamped down solid so that you could mill it. It take a whole lot to get this piece clamped where you wanted it. Uh, you'd have to do a lot of working and moving and finagling and figuring. But eventually you'd get it locked down there in a spot where you could mill, say you wanted to mill just a little place on this. Or if you needed it to be turned over and you had a bad place right here, you could mill that bad place off. Now, this is not like an engine lathe or a, a it's going to be a work to get anything like this leveled up and straightened up exactly where you can mill it okay it is not going to be a simple operation but it's an operation that you can do i think with this setup okay that was 49 dollars uh shipping and all from ebay now I'm going to take off this handle because I told you before, these handles I'd probably have to take them off. So I'm going to go ahead and take this handle off because it is in the way to show you the next item that I got. Uh, I went on Vivor and spent, uh, I think it was $89.95 and it was shipping and all. And I bought a crossfeed tape. Here it is. Of course, it'll have to be set like this so you can get to both handles. Now, this crossfeed table, what it does is it allows you to screw it this way and that way. It moves it this way and this way. This will need to be fastened down to the table. Uh, I'll have to decide where I want to put it. But the thing about it is, is the table itself, if you loosen it, the table will swing. So that will give me a couple of options. But what I'm also worried about is that this table will flex. And that will make my, 
make it chatter or make it uh, not as uh, movable. But down here below the table, I can put a steel rod from the floor mount to the bottom of the table with a screw that will allow this to be solided where it can't move up and down. Hopefully. That's, that's the plan. But now, this was $89.95 uh, for this. Now, as far as these grooves go in this Vivor table, I was in hopes that they were half inch. But guess what? They're not. So, these slots are not half inch. So, my half inch pieces, T-bolts, do not fit in here. See, they'll fit that way, but but the but the the T bolt part is too big to go through that. So, what a pain! I'm having to learn all this stuff the hard way. So, I wonder is there a bolt? Do I have a bolt that will just fit in there? So, I'm gonna go on a search and see if I have a bolt. Okay, I found something that I could use. All right. This is a carriage bolt. These are aluminum carriage bolts. They're not going to be suitable for this. But this carriage bolt, I'm certain I can probably find one a little bit bigger. And it goes right in here, right in this groove, and it won't spin. Okay. So you could tighten stuff down. This one, like I said, won't work, and I don't have a carriage bolt this size. This is an aluminum carriage bolt. came off of my old pontoon. So, I'm on the hunt now today to find carriage bolts that will go in this. So that it will sit still and me be able to tighten up and use this stuff on it. So... At least I found something that will work in these without having to go buy a new set of these. I bet toilet flange bolts would work too. Uh, but most of those are kind of brass and after a while they're not going to stand up to the torque. You really need a steel bolt. It really needs to be steel. So Now, what's the final thing that I've got? that I'm going to use to help convert this mill, this drill to a mill. Well, there's two more things. Two more things. Okay, I had this with another drill press. So this needs to get fastened down. Looks like it'll have to be fastened down that way. Uh, this would have to get fastened down in order to use this to roll it in and out. Okay, so this is a this is a work in progress. So what I've got to do is I've got to get bolts and uh, where I can fasten this down. I would like to find out today if this is going to work at all for cutting stuff side to side. And I think I'm going to start off with wood. So. Let's uh, show you the next thing, the last thing that I bought. This I had, this was, I had this with my little Craftsman drill press. So this is a clamp that I can use over and over and over. I can use it here, I can use it over at the Craftsman. It just has to be taken on and off of this uh, rotating, uh, off of this table. Now the table is going to have to get fastened down. And one of the problems I see right off is my slots my slots moved you well come here my slots right here don't line up with these slots is it that I'm going I may have to turn this table such that it sits like that and that makes my slots line up. Push it back there where you can see. That makes my slots line up with the grooves here. So I have to do it like that. Uh, 
Now, how far does this table move? This table only moves like three inches. And some of you are going to say, well, that's Mickey Mouse. Absolutely, it's Mickey Mouse. Uh, I am not a machinist. Uh, I taught flexible manufacturing systems and computer numeric controls and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, hydraulics and pneumatics. and But this is not ever meant to be a go-to very first meal. Okay? This is a parts maker for a homestead. It's not a big hardcore mill. Now, I think it will do a fine job milling. Okay? Now, I could have got a bigger table. A table that came out to the edges here and would move about 7 inches. Uh, about $150 is what they wanted for that table. But I didn't want to... I wanted to expand the least I could expand to test an experiment because this is an experiment. I didn't want to break the bank. Thus, I bought a used drill press, $200, a $89 crossfeed XY table. I had a, a clamp, a drill press clamp, and I bought a set of uh, drill press clamp down tools. You saw those. So, all told, I'm in this about $400. Now, if it works out, then I've saved a lot of money on a meal. If it don't work out, then I've got a lot of stuff for just running a drill press that I didn't have before. Because all those implements will be handy on just a drill press. So, let's look at the, the last things that I bought. Okay, the last things I bought were these. These are four flute mills. Now, I bought these on Amazon. Believe it or not, only $16. They're Taiwan specials. I don't have a problem with uh, these things. Hence, I buy Harbor Freight stuff all the time. Uh, I don't have a problem with them. I'd like to buy American. Uh, and I buy a lot of secondhand American stuff. But can't afford a lot of the straight up manufactured in America stuff. And to be honest, <coughs> not everything's manufactured in America. It might say manufactured in America, but the parts were made in Mexico or Taiwan or Malaysia or <coughs> and it was assembled in America. You cannot buy a tractor anymore that's completely made in the United States. There ain't one. You can't buy a car that's completely made in the United States. There ain't one. The parts come from Mexico and all the other places. So, I don't have a problem with that. Now, what I did is I bought an assortment of these mills. This is a half-inch chuck. So, this is a half-inch mill. Or, I believe this may be a 7 sixteenths mill. I don't know. It's got Chinese writing on it. it so I don't know what size it is. Uh, but the size of the mill bit doesn't really matter to me. Okay? Uh, I'll be cutting grooves and making multiple passes because, like I said, this is not going to be a heavy-duty mill. I'm going to be cutting grooves and making multiple passes. Uh, where you would take a quarter inch off with that on a regular mill, I might only be able to take off a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty-second at a pass. Does that make sense? Because this is not a mill. It's, it's a drill press being converted to a mill. But I don't mind to make uh, three passes or four to get the same desired result that I could have got with one pass of a regular mill. Okay, because the amount of money I'm going to save even a used mill around here, I've been looking around, and most of them are three-phase, and I don't have three-phase power here, and most homeowners don't. Uh, most of the mills around are three-phase, and they're $4,000. You can't even get close. Even the little mini mills are $1,200 now to buy a new one, so or a, or a, uh, or a Harbor Freight one mini mill. I think they're seven or eight hundred dollars, 
So, and that don't include all the other stuff. You know, the, the riser blocks and, and the mills, the end mills and things like that. So, yeah. Getting into this for five or six hundred dollars. Maybe four hundred dollars is gonna be four to five hundred dollars. It's gonna be awesome. Like I say, I paid sixteen dollars for this set, and I find these at the flea markets all the time for two and three dollars a piece used. They have to be sharpened or whatever, and two flutes and stuff like that. So I bought the fours because I'm gonna be machining wood and aluminum. But uh, you can find two flutes and stuff all the time for machining steel and things like that. So I'll find some more at a flea market somewhere. So these are good. But one thing for doing wood, I think I want to really try. This is what I want to try. And I want to try these today. These are carbide tipped router bits. Okay? Uh, a router turns at about 10,000 RPMs. This drill press maximum is like 40, 4,400 or 4,200. I don't remember exactly. I'll put the number up here. But I want to see if I can use these to make, to, to route with by hand on this mill. So let's uh, get the thing set and see if we can do that today. That's, that's what we're going to do today. This will let me see if going side to side is going to make this chuck come out. Okay? This will help me see that because I'll go down into the wood, lock it in place, and then route it. And we'll see if this chuck holds. So let's get up here and change the speed. Right now it's set at 150 RPMs. Let's set it at its highest RPMs. Here it is. There's a handle right here. And this allows you to tighten or loosen the belts. So I've loosened the belts. And right now it's set to where this is going at its slowest rate. It needs to be up here at its fastest rate. This needs to be at it, it's at currently at its slowest rate. It needs to be at its fastest rate. So this belt needs to go to the bottom, and this belt needs to come to the top. So I'm going to get these off, and then we're going to go from there. Okay, this was a lot easier than I thought it would be. <clears throat> this center pulley really flexes, and this just locks everything down. It was a whole lot simpler. It took me all of 30 seconds to change those two belts over to where this one and this one is going at the highest speed that it can go. Okay? And the highest speed is 4,200 RPMs. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah. That moves quick. So now... I want to put in I'm going to start off with this picture hanger bit okay some people call it a dovetail bit I call it a picture hanger bit because you can drill a hole down in and then make a, a long pass so I'm going to start with it, get this other stuff off the table so I don't injure myself like a big dummy. I have done that before. Injured myself for no good reason. Alright, let's get this bit in there. Now, when you tighten these up, go to every hole. Believe it or not, it makes a difference. Okay. Now, let's see how that does. 
But first off, I want to raise this table a little bit. Because I don't want to go have to go way down. Okay. Lock the table back in. Okay, everything's solid. Now, let's see what we can do with a piece of wood. I've got just a piece of scrap pine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the depth on here that I want that to go in. I want it to go in three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to set the depth right here. Oh, get out of the way. Right there's zero. I'm going to set the depth at three-eighths of an inch. So that's only going to drive down three-eighths of an inch. But if you look at that, I want to set it from the top of the wood, so I don't want to do it that way. I want to pull it down here. Right there is the top of the wood. Now I want to go three-eighths of an inch from there. Okay, all right, let's see how this is going to do. This is supposed to be like a picture that you're going to hang. Now let's put in a straight router bit and make it where I can lock it down here so that I can do stuff with both hands. This trying to do it with one hand don't work. Obvious, okay? So let's see if I can do it with two hands. So I want to get that to get that loose. Put everything down. My shop is so messy from uh, the winter, from the summer, because in the summertime, everything just winds up in the shop, just set down. So let's get this bit off, and it's probably hot as far. I'll just let it sit down in there for now because it's probably hot. So hot you can't touch it. bits in. Now I'm going to use this hole that's already here to bring this router bit down and then I'm going to lock it into place. <clears throat> Let's see how effective that is holding that into place. There we go. 
Now, let's see if I can follow a line. One of the biggest things, I'm going to come this way, and then over, and this way, and over, and this way. See if I can follow that line. Okay? I wish it was on a magic marker so you could see it better, but, you know... didn't offer to come out okay did not offer to come out so is this going to be a viable option for router writing and things like that oh I think so a little practice in case you don't know J-O-E-L Joel okay so now I'm on the search. I got to go get some uh, carriage bolts that will fit in that in that uh, thing. I may see if I can find some carriage bolts that I think will fit in this because those might be the best option. So now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homestead stuff every week, sometimes once, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing and find some bolts. Well, maybe I'll play a little more. <laughs>